Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here. I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this lovely scene um, provided by Sandy Thirsk, one of my uh, wonderful patrons. Thank you very much Sandy for this beautiful photograph of Costa Rica. So I'm working on a 18 by 24 canvas and we've got the following colors that I'll add below the video in the description. Titanium white, neon yellow cool, warm, neon orange, neon pink, red, and rose. Phthalo blue, uh, dioxazine purple, sap green, and light olive green. I'm gonna start by using a two inch or two and a half inch uh, wide flat brush just for blending the first layer for the sky. And I'm gonna take some white with a little bit of phthalo blue. We want it to be a very, very pale, pale blue. And we're just gonna pull this across the very top of the canvas. Nice long sweeping strokes. I'm going to take just a little bit of my neon yellow, cool, blend that in with the white and a tiny bit of blue. I'm going to start pulling it right in this area here so it starts to blend in and make a very soft turquoise color. Then I'm going to go like this just to pick up a little bit more of that blue and blend out any of that neon yellow just so that it turns more of a turquoise color. Okay, then I'll just continue along down here. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of purple this time. A little bit of water on my brush. So her horizon line is going to be right about here. So I'm going to continue a little bit more of that purple mixed in with a little bit of turquoise, blue and white. And down below here, we're going to have a pretty reflection of um, some blues and purples in the water. So while I've got this large brush and I'm using these colors, I'll just take them both, the purple, blue, and a bit of white, and I'm just gonna start right underneath the horizon. Need a bit of water on my brush. Take a little bit more purple this time. Oh. Some purple again. Now we're gonna be coming over part of this with our trees and foliage in the foreground, but we need to have this covered just to make sure that we don't have any uh, plain canvas peeking through and we have all of this because we can cover it up much easier now than and with some bushes than trying to come back in later on and, and go in those little areas that we may have missed. And I'm going to just 
play up a little bit more on the blue in this section. And I'm gonna line my brush up like this and pull, pull, and then a very light pull across. It just gives it a little bit more of a blurry look. We just wanna make sure that it looks like water. I've got a number 30 filbert brush here. Anything smaller or larger will work as well. Just gonna get it a little bit wet. Then I'm gonna go into more of that purple and blue color like we used down here. Just gonna start working on some clouds, shadows. I'm gonna make them look a little wispy and sweepy. And that's why I like to use the filbert brush because you can do that. It gives you that nice dreamy end and sweepy look to your skies and your clouds. So it's swirly wiggles like this, maybe some figure eights. Just really play around with your brush and the paint and have fun. I'm going to just continue layering down here and pick up a little bit more white and start to make these thinner and that's going to help give us that perspective. Now if at any point you're having a little bit of trouble blending that paint out, just go back for a bit of water in your brush, not rinsing all that paint out but just kind of loosening it up. And that can really help. And then we're going to start pulling them up higher in this area. sort of just block in those big areas with doing soft crisscrosses. I'm not going to worry about too much going on in here because we've got that the hillside and the all the foliage and trees. And do another layer right over here. just has a cloud sweeping down here and from the corner. And then from the top. And take a little bit of white there with that. And go over some areas of the clouds now and bring in where we're going to start to add our peachy highlights. And I like to do it gradually and kind of layer over so we get lots of mid-tones and soft, all sorts of soft pastel shades going on. So just pick a few areas of your clouds.
So this is, my brush still has a bit of that purple in there. So it's gonna give us a very light, soft uh, lavender color in some areas. We'll just add a few clouds up here. And then we're gonna have a nice big peachy cloud highlight coming right in there. So we're gonna dry this off um, before we start adding that color. And then right in here. Create all those little scoops you can Twist your brush around. And then underneath here. So right in this area, right away, I'm going to pick up a little bit of pink. A little bit of pink and a little bit of orange. Mix that up with some white. A little bit of water. nice warm area over here and I'll provide the photo I'm sure that's okay with you Sandy if I provide the photo reference photo for you guys if you want to follow along and and see the photo I'm gonna add a little bit more and bring it up a bit higher just because I know we've got that foliage that we're gonna be adding as well. So I want to make sure I've got this beautiful color in here. I'm going to get a little bit of that on the tip of my brush with some white and start adding some thin bright highlights All depends on how this is drying. If it's drying uh, fairly quick, then I can, I don't have to dry it off with a hair dryer. Um, but there are other areas that we can start working on while it's drying as well. Just taking that light peachy color that I made. And down in here, I'm gonna add a little bit of my neon yellow warm or cool. You could use actually the warm one too. Mix it with that hint of peach color. And I'm gonna add a little bit right in here. Let's see if we can come in there and add a little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna let that sit and give it some time to dry that's good because that's fine. I can work on the, the horizon line here and add the island in the back. Um, but right down in here, before I come in and do the, the foreground, I wanna make sure I've got some pink in the water just a little bit. I picked up a little bit of orange there, but that's okay. I'm gonna take a little bit of that neon rose as well. And I'm just gonna pull I just washed all that paint on my brush and there's a little bit of water in it so I can go over this. I'm gonna turn my brush this way. I'm 
them right away. Purple, phthalo blue. Maybe a little bit of that in there. You really can't go wrong with any um, amount of either one color that you use. It's all like personal preference, so whatever you choose. And I'm gonna just line it up here on our horizon line. And then a little bit more water again. Try to pull for a few more shadows in the water and some streaks to make it look like, you know, there's more, a little bit more light shadow going on. Soft, gentle waves, just some movement in the water and colors playing on one another. down to a number 12 filbert brush now. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and take that bluey purple color again. I'm just going to wiggle around get enough paint here on my brush. So it comes up just a little bit higher here and then slopes down. But the idea is you can get away with being wiggly here because as long as it's straight on the bottom, but we've got land way back there so it's a bit lumpy. Okay, and then right in here, I'm gonna pick up my without washing my brush off, because I want these to mix together. A little bit of my light olive green. Then a little bit of white. Took a little bit more and add just a few areas here that are gonna be a little bit lighter in color. I'm going to go into that light pink. We'll just add a few little highlights, maybe reflecting on our mountainside there. I'm just going to take a little bit of these colors what I've got left here of my peachy pink, a little bit of violet. And I'm just going to fill this in a little bit more. It's probably going to get covered up by all the bushes, but just want to make sure that there's no white showing because it's a little bit tricky to come in after, like I mentioned, to fill that in. So this is pretty dry now. I'm going to start coming in with clean brush, some white, neon orange, and neon yellow warm. We'll even a little bit of that neon yellow cool. A little bit more. We want it to create a really beautiful glow for our highlights here. Soft fuzzy peach color. Can start coming in here. And I can see I'm going to need more white already because it's kind of showing a little bit of that purple through there. And then a little bit more of the neon orange. And I'll just lightly start to go over this area here. I'm going to just soften my finger. And then I'm going to start 
to pull off and make it a little bit skinnier in here. So whenever we added the um, lighter highlights, the white for, that's all we're concentrating on right now. So I'm just going to make a little bit more. Just keep going. And then start to come in with smaller little hints here and there. We can make little soft rounded brush strokes and shapes. And we'll just pull a little bit over here as well. It's all how much and how little you want to add. Really get a feel for what type of sky that you like. What's your favorite type of sunset and the colors you would use and then really make it your own. Now this area is a little bit wet still. So I'll be adding a few more layers as we go along. Make sure that you're taking the time to stand back as well and have a good look. I'm going to pull in a little bit of pink this time. Actually, a little bit more pink. And I'm just going to start and even that's still a little bit too bright. go into my purple and blue. I want this to transition a little bit more and get a little bit more of that smoky purple in there. And then I'm going to come up from underneath. thin, thin, thin layer here, very transparent, and just sliding my brush, wiggling, add a little bit in here, very little amount, you don't need a lot. Back over to my pink peachy mixture. Now we can come in and play up a little bit more. It's 
So I might be alternating and kind of hopping back and forth over to my shadow colors. And then over to my highlights again. Soft little scoops like this. between and pull underneath. That really gives it that depth and makes all those highlights stand out. Okay, and I'm going to come in here. I'm get a little bit more generous with my highlights and the amount of paint that I'm using. So I'm going to add little sections here and then just leave it. I'm not going to blend too much. I'm just going to put these little half circles. And then these smaller little lines and dabs here, it gives us all that perspective. And don't think you have to have the same amount of each color every time you go to do this. Sometimes pull a little bit more into the pink and the orange, and that way it's gonna be a lot more interesting and natural looking. come from the top here. Pick up a little bit more white. I've always got a hint of the other colors in my brush, so when I go for another color, I'm not washing it out. If I am, when I am, I'll be sure to tell you guys. Now some of these clouds, I just want to have a thinner amount of paint for my highlights. So you'll just notice that I it's more of a, a scumble here. And here where we're going to have our rainbow, it's going to be, the rainbow's going to have a golden feel to it. It's going to have a bit of a, a filter of this pinky peachy warm color through it. I think that's what really, really got me to want to paint this. Thought that was quite pretty. Normally we see rainbows that are super bright, but this one had such almost like a, a vintage feel to it. So I'm going to go in and start the rainbow now. We're going to have it from here and then going up to here. So I'm going to start it. I've got all my rainbow colors here and I'm going to start with a little bit of 
a violet or no this is actually the rose i've also got a violet one but this is the rose and if you're curious about this brand of paint it's all the uh holbein neon or luminous paints okay so i'm just gonna start from here A little bit more there. And then it just disappears right at that area. So I kind of like to just soften the bottom. Okay, so there's the first color. Then I'm going to take neon red with a little bit of white. And I'm going to line it up and partially paint over the rose. Again, have it start to just disappear there. And then white with orange. You can use a little bit of, let's use both, the neon yellow warm and the orange. Okay, and again, line it up partially, just partially over the red. I'm going to rinse my brush out now. And then do the same thing. Pull out the end there so that it looks like it's just disappearing. And then I'm going to go into my neon yellow. Cool. A little bit of white. to make this one a little bit wider because I'm going to use it to make my green. So I'm going to take a little bit, just the tiniest bit of phthalo blue into that neon yellow cool. I'll make a really soft green color here. going to dry a bit darker. I'm going to get as close as I can to the green. Okay, and then I'm going to go into, I'm actually going to take my rose. With a little bit of that phthalo, I'll make a really pretty purple color. A little bit more white in here. Okay, I'm going to go just slightly over blue and just soften the outside. So a little bit of white, a little bit of that violet, same thing on this side.
okay now down here we're, we're gonna have just a little cloud that this is coming out of right down here so we're just gonna add those shadows same shadow colors just to soften the edges there. And go back over to that really pretty violet. A little bit of blue. We're gonna come in here and just gonna start to sweep. Few little highlights right here. Now we've got yellow, orange, and white. And then right inside the rainbow here, and then we're just going to pull. Okay, again, just those warm colors down here thin not too watered down because we don't want to disrupt anything going on but we're going to give it that transparent pretty filter a little bit of a water droplet right there so i'm just going to go over with a bit of white bit more water on my brush to soften. Okay, I'm going to go over this area again and just clean this up. It's a little bit of blue, green, well greens actually, purple. Get it on the end of my brush here. Okay, a little bit more purple to break that cool green. then a little bit of white because this has got to be a little bit lighter than what we're adding in the foreground to make this separate right it's got to remain in the distance so by adding a little bit of white there we can do that take a little bit more of my blue and purple this time
we'll bring this down a little bit lower so it goes straight across. There, so now it kind of gradually gets lighter and lighter right here. Okay, it's time to start coming in with our uh, hillside mountain here, all that foliage. I'm gonna be using my largest stipple brush here. I'm pretty sure it's a number 40, but you can use any stipple brush that you have or that you want uh, for this. And I'm gonna be taking purple with a little bit of both of my greens. I wanna get a nice dark base first. I often like to do this with purple because green and purple are complementary. So I'm gonna start down here at the bottom. And it starts to come up here and slope over top of that mountain in the distance and land. We're just getting the shape right now. And then this is going to come up right here and go sort of across like this. It's a little bit still use a stipple a little bit flatter across so a flatter stipple you're not gonna make it too uneven up here And then we're going to come over here, start tapping in. A little bit more purple. We're going to bring it up higher. A little bit higher right there, then it kind of goes down and then up. I've got a few mop brushes I'm going to use. One's an angle, one's an oval. I'm just using these because I can make more of a narrow shaped uh, treetop. And for my highlights, I'm going to take a bit of white, a little bit of that existing color in there with a bit more of the light green. And I'm going to start. See, it's just the perfect uh, width here. It's nice and narrow to get this flattish looking foliage and treetops back here. And I can kind of turn. I need a little bit more. It was very beautiful, a very beautiful uh, green in here. A little bit more on the cool side mixed with the warmer uh, yellow. It's back here that the temperature changes a bit. We get that glow and I'm going to be going over this 
with um, when it's all dry. Towards the end, I'll be going over with a little filter, a peachy filter there. much paint if you dry your painting off first but you guys know I like to paint wet on wet because then I get so many other uh, tones and colors because they start to mix together that one's getting pretty saturated I'm going to switch over to my angle brush and demonstrate how you can use this too. It's a really nice brush. Just tap in both greens. You want to make sure that you're leaving some dark shadows. Like you're not going to paint over the entire thing otherwise you're going to lose those shadows and it's just going to look really flat if you do that. You add a little bit of weight and then tap, tap, tap like that into both greens, but more of a bright olive green, then it's going to stand out more. If you're watching this and you've got some great photographs from your travels, um, if you want to become a patron, you can ask me or send them to me and I'll let you know if I can paint them. But quite often I take requests from my patrons. It's one of uh, the perks and benefits of being a patron, one of many. I just love using these brushes. I love adding highlights and creating foliage. So much fun. So to give this distance, right, we're gonna make this more of a solid, but tap. So there's no breaks in between for shadows. No spaces in between. And every once in a while, I'm picking up a little bit of that sap green that's more on the cool side. And we're going to continue right down to the bottom here. And then layering over once in a while just so that I make sure it changes up and I don't get a pattern happening. I, don't, I really don't want a pattern because it's going to make it look so unnatural. Now over here, I'm going to go into a lot more of my sap green. And there's going to be a bush right here in the more foreground. So this is foreground, midground, and background. There's going to be some pretty yellow flowers. And then we've got a few trees down here. There's some palm leaves, palm trees down in here, so we'll leave room for those. And then we'll just add a little, little highlight. And there's a few houses in here too. I can see little red uh, roofs. So I'm going to add, I'll use just a little, I've got a round brush, number two round brush and a number two uh, mini filbert brush. And I think actually that I'm going to use the round brush, I think that will show up a lot better. So I'm just going to take some white 
and right about down here, in this area here, I'm going to add a little skinny rectangle. These houses are really small, so try to just keep them smaller than you think you should. It's always good advice because we always tend to paint things bigger than what they actually are. So I have to remind myself of that. And for the roof, a little bit of purple, red and orange, and then I'll add um, a little bit more of the orange after if I need to. So diagonal line, little diagonal line there. Hold them together and join them. take a little bit of purple a little bit more of the purple here just make sure that this is set in here a little bit better with some more shadows take a little bit of my green and my purple now. And I'm just going to go around the house and kind of making gentle little pulls and taps. This will set the house in and it won't make it look like it's kind of just stuck on and doesn't really belong there. It's got to make sense. It's got to have shadows around it in an open area. Now there are some uh, little bushes and foliage around the front, so I'm just going to tap in a little bit more right in here. And then with a little bit more of my green, I'll add some here, more in shadow, but they're still there and they're kind of covering the front or the side of the house. Okay, and then we're going to have some windows. I'll just add a little shadow under the, the roof line here. And then just two simple little lines. And that's all you need to do just to make it look like a house. I'm just going to add a little bit more white in here and straighten this house out a little bit more. It looks like it's leaning a little bit. there. I think it was the angle that it was on there too, on the end of the house. Then there's another little house down here. Right about, right about in here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of purple around it. Just a little bit of purple and then my red, orange, and there's purple in my brush too, doesn't matter. A little diagonal line. And we're only just seeing part of the root because the rest is, is covered up. I'm just taking a little bit of my yellow and orange again. And to make sure that it doesn't dry like doesn't disappear when it dries. I'm just taking a little bit of white. I'll do the same on this one too. And then it's more in shadow, so we're going to have a shadow. We're going to tint our white with some shadow colors. And I'm going to use my blue and purple for that. And we're just going to see a tiny bit right down here. Then 
cleaning brush, some green and purple. Cut around the house and add some more shadows under that roof line. Maybe a little line right in here for a little window. I'm going to work on the yellow flowers that are here. So I'm going to take a little scoop of white and a scoop of yellow. And I'll start over here. Little groups, taps. So what the white does is prevents it from, because they're, they're transparent, the neons. So if you want it to look the bright neon color, or when you're painting over something dark, you really need to add a little bit of white to make sure that it dries to the true color. So I'm using a lot of paint purposely so that when it's all dry, we'll be able to feel it, it'll have a texture, giving it a little bit more um, 3D look to it. And I like, I like that texture for stuff in the foreground. I think it's neat. I know people, there's other ways of doing it too. You can use modeling paste. I'm going to take a little bit because there's some areas here where it's a mixture of a bit of warm and cool yellow. Some areas in here I'm going to use a little bit less white and just create lots of little taps and these can be like little leaves. I'm going to just twist my brush and get some of that bright green on there. Definitely use a liner brush for this if you want, but if you're really careful and you twist, it's got a little bit, it's like a really pretty sort of emerald green color in here. Neon yellow cool with the other yellows. and add some little dabs for some leaves. Add a little bit of white in with that so that it makes sure that these stand out once they're dry. A liner brush or a round brush you can use for stems and leaves and flowers. You don't necessarily have to switch brushes. Okay, a little bit more.
And then we've got some right down here too. I'm going to use my number 12 or 16. I think this is a 16 filter. And I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush. That peachy color. A little bit of white, maybe a little bit of yellow. little bit more of the orange. There we go. A little bit more white. rainbow. <laughs> Got a few more highlights here. And I'm going to take a little bit of that rose before it can all dry. Mix it right into that peachy color that we used in here. Oh, isn't that pretty? I'm just washing that out back over to a bit of white. And just soften. Like a little bit more to make this pop just a little bit. I want it to feel like it's sort of glowing. A little bit more white. I'm going to come in with the remainder of my peachy coral pinky color and add just the final um, colors to these clouds. Just getting a little bit more white on my palette here, guys. And my yellows warm and cool. A little bit of orange in there maybe, just want to get this. Uh, bring it up a little bit higher in highlights. It's this one cloud here in the photo that I'm reference photo that's really, really beautiful. I'm just going to go over that orange area there and tone that a bit. Take those colors again, a little bit of white. Yellow 
purple and blue and white. Okay, so I just added a little bit of that greeny blue and white just to kind of brighten this area up a little bit more. And I'm just going to work a little bit more on these shadow parts of the clouds, blue, purple, and white. my brush just kind of flat like this and scumbling out that color and then it comes in here and overlaps Just a few areas here where there's some darker shadows in the clouds. Just gonna go into that. Blue color there with a little bit of tiniest bit of yellow. Just soften these a little bit. little bit of that pretty orange. I love painting skies. I could spend hours and hours just adding and changing things up. Just added a little bit of white just so that it dries nice and bright and doesn't possibly turn uh, a color I don't want it to be, like green or brown. Okay, and I'm just gonna go right underneath that range there with a mm, little bit of rose, white, just make sort of a smoky earthy color here. A little bit of water on my brush and go right across try to do it all in one stroke I want to add a few more highlights here and really set that back. So back over to an oval one inch olive green and a little bit of white. Go 
come up with that a little bit there. Okay, and then I'm going to take Young Yellow, Sap Green. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's what's missing over here is a little bit of that too. Three greens. I'll add a little highlight. I'm just going to start a few layers here for palm leaves. But um, silver brushes work well. You can use a rake fan brush. Those are really neat brushes to use, but I think I'm just going to use filbert because most of you have a filbert brush. Okay, so just want to take the greens, a little bit of white, neon yellow in there. Maybe a little bit more of that sap. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of purple because it's more... An earthy green here in the with the lighting and the photo I'm going by. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna add a little bit more purple in here to make it really really dark and then I'm going to go over and use because I'm not liking how this is um, it's not really fanning out the types of palm leaves that I want so I am going to switch over to the rake fan and those are actually really cool brushes so I want to show you guys those ones but I will show you just because I, I told you I was going to show you how to use a filbert brush Here's another way of doing it. Just flattening it into the color you want on the tip of your brush. And you would just do a few leaves separate like that. But I'm gonna show you an even better way of painting them is a lot easier and quicker and it's just really satisfying to use these brushes so this is a uh, number three even tail rake fan brush I'm going to take those same colors water because it's like a ton of liner brushes all on one brush so you definitely need to have water in there and let's add one uh, right about here see pull and sweep go over those ones Isn't that neat, guys? So you can get these on Amazon or pretty much at any uh, fine art store. 
I got uh, a few of mine at Michael's. So now I'm gonna rinse that off and go into my yellow, white, and my lighter greens. You only need it really kind of quarter of the way from the end of the brush. It's really all we're using. So I'm gonna go layer over. Oh, gotta load your brush each time. We'll have some that are coming down here in the front. And I just love this brush. Use these for um, waterfalls sometimes too, but I think most of you guys are, that are watching are longtime followers of mine, and you've seen me use this brush before, and you might even have this one. So this is the perfect painting um, to use this for. For those of you that are new to my channel, and um, I've given you another option there with a filbert. You could try using um, a fan brush too if you wanted. Fan brushes can can work. They're a little bit harder to control. Let's come down here and add a little something right there too. And then there's some little trees in and around here. I'll add a few branches. Or maybe because I'm having so much fun with this brush, I'll add another palm leaf in front of those. I'm going to make this one darker. So a little purple and green. Take a little bit more of my purple and a little bit of blue. Just gonna come in here and add some little half circles. Make it look a little bit more bubbly. This cloud needs a little bit more depth. Just softening with a little bit of water right here. Okay, I'm going to pull this back and let you guys have a look from the distance a little bit more here. So I loved painting this. Thank you so much, Sandy Thirsk, for um, sending me this photo of your lovely uh, trip to Costa Rica. I hope you like this and uh, want to paint along, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It all helps to put my channel and videos out in the algorithm so more and more people can discover the joy of painting along with us. Uh, have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye!